In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use bindable events on Roblox. Let's get started. So welcome back to another tutorial. My name's Alvin Blocks and if it's your first time here, make sure that you've subscribed and that you've turned on the notification bell so you never miss out on when I upload a brand new video. So what are bindable events? Well, a bindable event is it's a type of event similar to remote events, uh, which you might have heard of before. And what it does is it allows two scripts to talk to each other. Uh, so one script will fire the bindable event and the second script will pick it up uh, and listen out for this event to be triggered and when the event does get triggered it can run another piece of code so it's one script telling another script to do something else so it allows your script to communicate with each other talk to each other and they're quite useful when you're making your own games because you might want to only trigger a certain piece of code at a specific time uh, so you can use a bindable event and trigger it from a different script uh, to do different things so the difference between bindable events and remote events uh, is that bindable events do are not useful for when you're trying to make your game filtering enabled or non-experimental uh, because remote events they are, they allow you to uh, talk they allow the client to talk with the server so the the player to talk with the server however bindable events only allow you uh, to talk on the server so you could have a server script talking to another server script but let's say you couldn't have a server script talking to a local script uh, in in the player everything has to be on the server so in the workspace server script service server storage uh, when you're using bindable events so two scripts which can talk to each other uh, on the server that is what a bindable event does so yeah, it's intended for server to server, not client to server. So let's go and do a little example of how they work. So I've got a bindable event in the workspace. If you want to add one, you just click on the plus and type in bindable event. And I've also got two scripts in here. So one's called event fire and one is called event listener. So the way that a bindable event will work is you'll have one script which fires the event. And then you'll have a second script which is listening out for this event to be fired and when it's fired by the first script the second script which will be listening out for it will pick it up and will execute its code so we're going to start off with our fire scripts and we're going to trigger this event so that it can be picked up in the listener script so an example of how this might work is let's say for example you are uh, trying to make the base plate a different color but we're going to trigger it from a different script. So let's go into our fire script and we're going to create a variable for our bindable event. So let's say local bindable event equals game dot workspace colon wait for child and inside the speech marks we can say bindable event just like this. Once we've done that what we're going to want to do is begin constructing the trigger. So to trigger the event and to send it off to the listener what we're going to do is we're going to say bindable event because that is the name of the event, it's the name of the variable and then we're going to say colon fire open bracket close bracket and that's all you have to do to fire off your bindable event. So now that we've fired it we need to go into the listener script and we need to write some code which will execute whenever this event gets fired by a different script. So to do this, we're going to create another variable for our bindable event, just like we did in the first script. Wait for a child, open bracket, close bracket, and inside of these we're going to just say in speech marks, uh, bindable event. So we've got our bindable event, which is in the workspace, and now what we're going to do is we're going to create a listening event which will always be on the lookout to see when this event gets triggered and um, when it is triggered what's going to happen is it's going to execute the, some code and in this case we're going to change the color of the base plate so let's say bindable event dot event uh, uh, colon connect open bracket function open bracket close bracket drop a few lines 
and now we've got our listener event so any code which goes in here uh, in here will run when the bindable event is fired so when we fire it from this script this second script is going to run the code which is inside of this event so let's go and set the base plate to a random color so let's say game dot workspace dot base plate uh, dot brick color equals brick color dot new open bracket close bracket and we can say really red in fact let's make this random let's say brick color uh, dot random open bracket close bracket so this is going to make the base plate a random color so let's go and test this out we're going to head back into the uh, base plate I'm going to click on run and if we go into the output you can see nothing has happened in fact something did actually happen the base plate just got chained to the same color uh, because it was random so what are the chances so what we're going to do is we're going to just go to the fire script and let's just add a wait three just so that we can see the change happen uh, and see it change to a different color so let's run the script again i'm going to wait one two three and you can see it has changed to a random color let's go and run it again and after three seconds it should change to a different color okay and it will keep going I think it might change to the same color uh, yeah it is because uh, of some issues with random uh, but let's change this to brick color dot new open bracket close bracket really red and let's run this and it should change to red after three seconds there we go so what's happened is we have got our fire script and after three seconds this script is firing the bindable event and then our second script is picking up this event which just got triggered and it's running this code which will make the base plate red but what if you want to change it to a different color uh, but you want to specify that from the fire uh, script so what we can do is we can pass an argument here and this argument will get sent over to the listener script so that the listener script can update the base plate color to whatever we specify it to be. So let's say in uh, brackets, in this in these brackets, in, in this string, let's say really blue. That's going to be our color and we've passed it as an argument. You can have as many arguments as you want, just separate them by commas. Um, and when you're in the listener script, it's going to be done in order. So the first argument is going to be uh, the the color, this string, because it's the first one which we have uh, which we've typed out. But in our case, there's only one argument uh, which we've specified. So we only need to say uh, we need we only need to write one uh, place placeholder argument here. So let's just say color because this color will be updated to the color that we actually specify uh, when the uh, fire script sends over really blue so it's going to take this really blue and tell the listener that the color is going to be really blue so let's go and run this and hopefully the base plate should turn really blue after three seconds so there we go it's turned blue you can see we sent the argument of really blue it's picked it up as color and it has updated the brick color to whatever that color was so that's how you use bindable events and uh, and uh, arguments in Roblox Studio. Hope this video helped you. If it did, please leave a like. Make sure to subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you never uh, so you never miss out on when I upload a new video. And this is Alvin Blocks telling you to keep scripting.